Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to another exclusive conversation with love on the Backbreaker Media Network, the exclusive one-on-one interview series that is sweeping the nation, or at the very least, our province of Alberta, Canada. Don't forget that Backbreaker Media is a proud member of the Wind Column Sports Network, so don't forget to tune into Wind Column for all of your previews, reviews, and breaking news in Albertan wrestling and wrestling worldwide. We're also proudly sponsored by Beercade. Check us out. Over the Top Rope Live is live, obviously, every pay-per-view. Yes, every pay-per-view from the WWE live at Beercade YEG. So join us, join members of the independent wrestling community here in Edmonton, Alberta at 106th and 82nd Avenue. As always, I'm your host, Spencer Love, and this week I am very, very excited about my interview. There's a lot of big news here in the world of Albertan wrestling, and perhaps none more so than the brand new commissioner of the Prairie Wrestling Alliance. Obviously, I am talking about Thaddeus Archer III, the most well-dressed man in Alberta wrestling, the paragon of style, and just Overall, for me, one of the best minds in Alberta wrestling. We're going to talk about his time with Real Canadian Wrestling, why he chose to leave Real Canadian Wrestling, and what got him into wrestling as a whole. It was one of my favorite conversations that I have had. I feel like I say that every single time that I uh, that I do an introduction for this show. But he's just a great guy. He's a great friend. He's someone that I was very excited to get on the show, and there is no sense in hyping it up anymore after the break here on Conversations with Love on the Backbreaker Media Network. We'll get to my conversation with TA3, Thaddeus Archer III. The following advertisement is sponsored by Beercade YEG. Hello. You are listening to a commercial for the podcast Over the Top Rope. The flagship podcast of the Wind Column Sports Network as well as a proud member of Backbreaker Media. Again, this podcast is sponsored by Beercade YEG. You can find us pretty well anywhere that podcasts are played, including on the iTunes, Podbean, the Google Play, SoundCloud, and on windcolumnsports.ca for all your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of professional wrestling. Tune in every Friday on Backbreaker Media, a member of Win Column Sports. Welcome back. It is Conversations with Love on the Backbreaker Media Network, a proud member of Win Column Sports, and I am still your host, Spencer Love, and joining me is potentially the most interesting man in Alberta wrestling right now. Thaddeus Archer III, the new PWA commissioner, former RCW general manager, and a well-dressed gentleman. First yes. of all, my friend, how are you doing? I am excellent. I'm, yeah, dressed uh, in my new suit, which you unfortunately missed on Saturday when I debuted for PWA. Man, I know. And, like, not even your debut notwithstanding. I'm always disappointed to miss a rumble. I'm disappointed I missed the return of the PWA original Marky. Yes. Um, Thoroughly enjoy watching that guy. He was at uh, one of the first shows that I ended up going to. But I'm not here to talk about Marky, at least right now. I'm here to talk about you, man. Obviously, you just said it yourself, but you debuted for PWA at the Resolution Rumble on January 26th. You were a longtime RCW guy. You did an excellent job there. You've made the move to PWA. I guess, why the transition? Uh, Well, PWA has kind of come up a few times over the years. Um, We... There was a point in time where I was, uh, before I, you know, became a general manager, before I really became a real local push hype man, uh, when I was just doing my manager, my manager stuff, that uh, Kurt appreciated it. Uh, years and years and years ago when I started out as a manager, he gave me some advice. I took it, so he always took a liking to me. Um, I utilized it, and I was doing great as a manager, and he was going to bring me in, and I just things didn't work out. Uh, what happened is Dr. Kyoto came back. Uh, who's also a stud. Nothing against you, oh, but like, man, what I, a stud, I, man. He's somebody who's also got to be on one of these shows one of these days. He, he I could talk to that man for hours. I, right? I, 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 I call him senpai, and he's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, no, no, you are the master. You're, you're senpai. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, okay, well, sorry. You're, I, I revere you, so got to deal with it. Guy's a stud. Yeah, so no, there was a time where you know, I was maybe going to do it. Didn't work out. Um, and Kurt sort of left the door open, and we didn't talk for a while because I was – 
pushing hard in my uh, called my Archer Report phase. Once I started the Archer Report, I was loving it. So I was, you know, doing a lot of local promoting and pushing and trying to, you know, get RCW up to the next level. And uh, it was just starting to feel like things were had run their course in RCW, and I was maybe looking at a change. Uh, I know I posted things and done things, frustrations that I may have had with, uh, with Stephen, uh, with the promoter. And so I just... Somebody got upset with me one day and told me, if you if you don't enjoy it here, then there's the door. And I thought, maybe I'll start looking You're at right. what's outside that door. There's the door. And, uh, yeah, so, and I don't mean to, you know, I, I, wrestling's all about respect, and I mean to be respectful. But at the same time, if uh, if things fall flat continually, and, you know, I'm really, I'm working really hard all the time. I want to see other people doing the same or some cohesiveness. And so, yeah, Kurt's door is open for Kurt, and... He said, it just worked out. Timing was perfect. He said, in the new year, I'm looking for a new commissioner for Edmonton. Uh, we have Duke Durango, who's retired and who wants to do Calgary, but he doesn't want to do a lot of traveling. He's happy with just Calgary. I need a new Edmonton guy. He said he, has, he had quite a list of people that were PWA, like alumni or associated with PWA. He kind of wanted to shake it up a little bit and chose me, so... Very, very cool, man. And like we said, you debut at the Resolution Rumble. You immediately make a statement. I mean, you were telling me a little bit about the dusty finish. You were telling me you booked a match. I want you to tell me about the match you booked because let's be honest here, man. Nobody's listening to this because I'm hosting it. <laughs> well, yeah, the finish to the Rumble, which uh, I had a few fans complain to me about after the fact. but Of course, as it, you always will, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, it was, it was one of those ones that was you know, fast and furious, and what ended up happening was uh, Marky was grabbing MRB. That's PWA original. Marky. Oh, yeah, and he's... Come on, man. He told, you know, after the show, I had said, I, I'm used to who he is, and that's yep. what you call him. Yep. And he just laid into me. He's like, if you're going to be the commissioner, call me the PWA original. So, sorry, Marky. I owe you, like, seven beers now. Um, so, yeah, PWA original, grabs MRB, goes for the top rope bulldog, you know, like, runs up, flips around, it's coming down, and there's Mr. Uh, BVD, grabs him, and in the process of grabbing Marky and everybody in this sort of pile on foo for raw pile foo for raw they all just barrel over the top rope and hit the floor hey and over the top rope hell of a podcast yeah yeah and uh, <laughs> it just happened that uh, all all of the three referees that were there that night were all you know on one other side of the ring um it turns into a big kerfuffle i have mrb yelling at me i have bvd looking like he's gonna punch me the original is just upset uh, everyone's asking, you know, who won. Uh, the referees are all in confusion. One says, this, one says this guy won. One says that guy won. Basically, each ref thought this person won. Yeah. And uh, it worked out that we're sitting in the ring, and I'm talking. Kurt at that point in time had come up, and I'm talking to him. So, like, what's our options here? I was just thinking of restarting the the rumble, and yep. with the three in it, and just going from there, and then Sheik. Yeah. Our wonderful champion Sheik walks out. Oh, um, man. Looking like a stud. and uh, Always looking like a stud. I yeah. think that goes without saying, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he appreciates it, but Sheiky, like, you always look like a champion. He's in incredible shape now. I've known Sheik for a long time. I actually managed him once for one night. Really? Years and years ago. Very yes. cool, man. And he's in incredible shape right now. He's obviously a champion for a reason, but uh, he said, you know what? I don't care. I'll take on all three guys. We'll make it a fatal four-way at the anniversary show. And I thought, you know, that's a great idea, but... If this is if such a big match, a culmination, and knowing the four men involved, I I said, let's make it a TLC match. Yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of TLC matches. I, I'm a bit of a collector of strange things. So in my shed, I have a couple folding tables. Very um, cool. I, all, everything's gone plastic now. Yep. So it's hard to find those, those wooden folding tables. It's well known for <laughs> professional wrestling, right? So I knew I had a couple in there, and I just thought... Oh, uh, what's a good way to get rid of them? And well, yeah, exactly. Make more room in, the, in my shed for the spring. And at the same time, this is a uh, TLC match. It's just, and, and when you look at Nate, the TLC and ladder matches that have, when PWA was in Nate, I know, yeah. you know, when we did it's built for it. That tag team championship match last year was not. Yeah. So it, why not? Let's, this show already is going to be big, huge. Personally, I think it's going to be the biggest events yeah. in 2019. I mean, 
Well, dude, it's going to be insane. You've got Jeff Cobb coming back. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We've got TJ Wilson coming back, famously trained MRB, and Brandon Van Danielson. It's going to be a huge show, man. And I think, you know, I've said for a long time, unfortunately, just through shoot jobs taking place, I haven't had a chance to make it out to PWA for far too long, but I've long said they put on one of the best independent wrestling products in the world. Mm -hmm. I think, what do you think differentiates them, not even just in Alberta, but worldwide, as just a, a class act of a promotion? Well, they, it's production, I think, is one of the, the huge factors. Uh, locally, they are at the top of the food chain because of production. Yeah. Uh, I was, it was night and day for me. I was so impressed prior to the show, going over everything in the show, having everyone together as a group. Uh, Boris on production is like amazing. The best production guy I've worked with in wrestling. Yeah. And so you just had this preparation and production and then this professionalism. Yeah. Like it felt professional. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, indie wrestling is indie wrestling, but it just, it felt like I was, you, you were part of something big. And so they have this, air, you know, air about them, obviously because they are something bigger because they take pride in what they do. And then they've been doing it longer than anybody else. Yeah. They've been doing it for 18 years. Uh, just today, I was talking with a gentleman, and I mentioned that, you know, he was asking me about the suit, and he's like, what, what's going on here? And I said, oh, I work in local professional wrestling. And he goes, mm-hmm. oh, PWA. Didn't say anything else. He said PWA. Yeah. He also said he wasn't a fan of wrestling. He, he takes his son out once in a blue moon, but he said PWA. So it just goes to show, it's like, it is the company that's synonymous for wrestling in Alberta. Yeah. It, it, Obviously, Stampede in the past, but if you look at anywhere in the last twenty years, it's PWA. since Stampede closed. Yeah, at the very at the very earliest. I know PWA has obviously been going on since before then. But what do you think you're going to bring different to the, I guess, commissioner role or the promotion as a whole that nobody else did bring? I mean, you're the first full time commissioner since Andy Anderson was, unfortunately, and I do say unfortunately, guys removed as the commissioner last year due to Big Bad Boris who. Just to sidetrack again, never met, heard nothing but great things about you. What are you going to bring different? Uh, I think with me, it's uh, I'm well known um, for being a hype. Mm-hmm. Uh, speak of people I've worked with, you know, Slammer, for instance, uh, you know, people outside, there was a column written on me just today. Literally be, today. Literally today. To timestamp this podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, this will be last week or whatever. But yeah. yeah. But no, I, I, you know, I just, I push so hard. I, I, even if I'm not in my suit, if I'm anywhere, I can be in the line of the grocery store or I could be just recently uh, purchasing a new vehicle at the dealership. I'm talking about wrestling. Yeah. You know, and I just, I love it. I want everybody to be able to enjoy it locally. So I think Hype Man is part of it is, uh, I can also help, you know, with the arch report, get some more eyes on it. Hopefully, obviously with lots of production and, know things that PWA does and does great but I can add to it uh, and add to you know even on social media pushing it with people um, and then so yeah hype bands one and two you know with my knowledge and love of the sport I'm not saying I'm a veteran in any way but a I grizzled veteran that yeah, is I'm not a grizzled old vet I'm not a grizzled young vet either but uh, <laughs> the, the nicely played you've <laughs> always had a way with words yeah but uh <laughs> When it comes to bottom line, I, I talk to anyone. I, I've had any form of fan or person message me. I'll talk to anyone who loves wrestling. And so I listen to the people. And so I can be you know an outside, uh, I wouldn't say objector, but I, I can provide a different point of view to whereas a promoter of Kurt's stats has been doing it for years. I'm not saying he's, you know, turned off to what the fans are, but I'm very engaged. 100%. You know, and I, I, I think... Again, not like it's a shot at Kurt. I get, I get where you come from completely. Is with any business, not just wrestling. It's always good to have a new voice in the room, and especially someone who, you know, you say you're not a veteran. I would 100% say you're a veteran. I was actually, the last conversations with Love we did was a bucket list for me with Nicole Matthews, and I said one of the biggest compliments you can give in wrestling for me is a grizzled veteran, somebody who brings experience, someone who brings knowledge, someone who brings just, just, you know, you can't teach experience, you know, and, and no matter how naturally good someone is at something, the experience to it just adds that much more, you know, 
Yeah, you, can, you can't teach experience, but you can impart it. And 100%. You need someone to impart that upon you. 100%. And yeah. so to go back to it, you know, you're a veteran of the scene, but you are also someone who is new to the PWA, who mm-hmm. is, despite working with a guy like the Slammer or MRB or, or any of the new talent who, you know, I don't know if you've worked with a guy like Mo Jabari or Barry Grayson or stuff like that before, but the stuff you can bring to that promotion is going to be insane, man. And one thing, you know, you mentioned it earlier, but the Archer Report, yes, is going to return. Yes. So before I start hyping it too much, because I'll mark out as soon as I start talking about it, just tell the fans out there of Conversations with Love about the Archer Report, the glorious Archer Report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I have one fan. No, um, the, Archer, the Archer Report is sort of a short-form uh, show. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's been comparisons, and in, in some way it was... Uh, it's what inspired as being the elite. And this is a while back because I've been doing the Archer Report for a while now, too. I think it was episode 48 was the last one, correct? Somewhere 48 around we, there? No, we did 49. Okay. Uh, that was uh, Kyle looking for the Canadian right. So it wasn't Excuse me on it. No, and I haven't watched was that was my one last yet, one so. where I mentioned I was leaving, leaving RC. Last air quotes there. Yeah. Yeah, last one. That's Everybody called the last one. I didn't say it was the last one. I just said it was uh, my, my goodbye message to RCW, thanking the fans and... <laughs> Everyone in RCW, right? But, um, yeah, it's just a short form. I'd say anywhere from 12 minutes to, I mean, the longest I think we've had is 18 minutes. A uh, short form show of just what's happening in the backstage. Because the biggest thing i found with independent professional wrestling is some guys get promos and some guys don't. You go to a show and you'll only learn so much about so much of the roster. You, you, the main event guys should probably get a feel for it better, but when there's just a match, you don't know enough about you know the, this guy or that guy, and you enjoy his gimmick and you're tra- you know you're excited by who this guy is, but what makes him tick? Well, and even saying that, there's only so much you can do in a monthly show or a show that runs once a month in one area. I guess is the best way to put it, because obviously PWA is running twice a month. Even RCW now going to be running five times a month throughout Alberta, but. There's only so much you can get to know a guy or yeah. experience a lady or anything yeah, there's like no, that. There's no TV. Like, and exactly. You're, you're not getting weekly repetition of something. So no matter how much they, I guess for lack of a better way to put it, shove it down your throat, you're only going to retain so much of it no matter how good they are. Yeah. And so, that, that was the thing is I know one of the local companies had TV. I didn't, for, I didn't really tell the story a lot. It did a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't something I enjoyed. And for me, I'm a real outside-the-box sort of guy. Uh, I respect I respect the old ways. I respect tradition. At the same time, I, with the amount of wrestling I watch, because I watch, like, you name it. And oodles and of oodles. wrestling. <laughs> I'll watch DDT, MLW, Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, uh, anything I can get my hands on. I'll watch CMM, CMLL down in Mexico. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll watch Indies up in Canada because I want to see what's happening around here. Yeah. And so I get sick and tired of the same promo of a guy yelling at the camera, screaming at the guy that he had just had a match with, and saying this is what we're going to do to you next time, and just that same yelling promo. That Here's he, what's going on at Payback. Yeah, it just, it just gets old. And at the same time, we watch everybody watches, or most people watch WWE, and you know, or TNA, and Ring of Honor to some degree. And there's always, they do a good job of telling some more of the story in the background. Yeah, right. And some people roll their eyes at some of the skits, and some people laugh at some of the skits, and some, some people enjoy them, some don't. But I thought, I've always been a big fan of Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. Like, I, as a very young man, I would stay up late every night and watch Saturday Night Live, and I'd tape it, and I'd find the older Saturday Night Lives on, like, compilation cassettes. I was a tape trader for Saturday Night Live. Not very right. cool. Yeah. So, I, you know, I enjoy skits <laughs> to some degree, and so I thought, you know, like, let's make something different where it's, in my mind, I would say, like, a Marvel movie where you have that drama, you have that action, but you also have some comedy, and you just kind of you kind of run the gamut of all the emotions so that if anybody watches it, it's not like, oh, this is wrestling, yeah, they're going to yell, and there's going to be some action maybe or something. But if they watch it, or they have something they can laugh at and enjoy, and that's the biggest thing, the biggest compliment I've heard from people is that I've shown my girlfriend this, or I've shown somebody, my sister or brother this, and they enjoyed it just for the fact that they could laugh at it, and there was, you know, they didn't know the characters. But you don't need to be a wrestling fan to you know, enjoy it. Exactly, so that it can draw more people to wrestling, right? So, 
Yeah, Archer, long story short, Archer Report was was that, really. It was just trying to do something different. Uh, and how it started was uh, I'd gotten tired of, I hadn't gotten tired of managing, but I, I'd gotten tired of managing this guy, that guy, everybody all around. And I, I enjoyed the times that I managed someone that was very, we worked together in a copacetic. Mm-hmm. You know, like we, we had something, like Dick Richards when I worked with him. We were, we were a team. And, you know, it wasn't a short-form thing. Like, we were only going to last a few months. It lasted a few years. So I, I didn't really have anyone at the time and place to say, I want to manage this guy. Just yeah. no one piqued my interest. And uh, I was almost ready to actually walk away due to some frustrations. And uh, somebody gave me some advice. Actually, heavy metal. Love you, brother. Uh, gave me some advice and said, well, we're doing the war for RCW right now with Top Talent. Why don't you be a backstage correspondent? Why don't you be a war correspondent for what's going on? Yeah. Start interviewing people. We don't have, you know, they didn't have that at the time. We, we don't have anyone interviewing, asking things. It's just the monthly shows and maybe a little bit of video here and there. So I started doing it and I started liking it. And the big thing about it is it wasn't your traditional, uh, just very plain, flat interview. You know, we throw some weird hiccups in there or comedy in there. If I was interviewing a heel that got annoyed with me, he'd chase me out of the room or something. Very mean Gene-esque. I was just going to uh, say you're more a Gene, uh, Gene Okerlund than Gene Principe. Yes, absolutely. So it, it, hard, it was bringing some of that old into the new, but also changing it as well with some mm-hmm. skits and things like that, regular running bits. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's our report in a nutshell. <laughs> very, very cool. Before we take a quick break here on Conversations with Love, favorite episode of the Archer Report? Oh, I got asked that recently. Yeah, um, I know when you're getting asked it again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's really hard for me to say because I hate a little bit of every part of them. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so... Uh, I think one of the ones I, I enjoyed the most, uh, but I wish, obviously, we had done about three or four more scenes for, was uh, the Freaky Thads Day. And that yep. was, we did a few uh, experimental ones. Once I got comfortable and I needed to make some, you know, other, uh, once people got to know all the characters, you know, we're in the mid-30s or 40s of the episodes, uh, I want to do some outside-the-box stuff. So uh, I thought, you know, let's do, we did a weekend at Bernie's Riff. Yeah. Yeah, it was a weekend at Thads. And where I got knocked out and Kyle was trying to keep me talking and doing stuff and being the general manager while I was knocked out. Well, at the same time, I, I really enjoyed the Freaky Thads Day where we touched a haunted Scott Steiner figure. And, of course, there was some Scott Steiner math in there. Uh, and then we switched bodies. Yeah. And I just had a lot of fun being Kyle. And I had a lot of fun watching Kyle be me. It's interesting <laughs> when you watch someone imitate you. Yep. And vice versa, imitating someone else. So I'd say that was one of the more fun ones. Very, very cool, man. Well, when we come back from this break, there's still more to talk about as far as the Archer Report goes, so we're going to get into that. We're going to get into your time as the general manager of RCW, the manager of top talent, your love of wrestling, and hell, whatever the hell else we get into here, Thad, in our wide-ranging conversation on this week's Conversations with Love. If you like podcasts, and you by listening to our Backbreaker Media, then you should listen to me, Chris Parrish, and myself, Manoy, and the Sounds of Struggle, because we are literally the most entertaining duo you'll ever come across in Western Canadian wrestling, baby. We talk about things like wrestling, and other sports we like. Like but, wrestling? But we won't talk about other sports that we don't like, because it's not that kind of podcast. Like wrestling. I mean, uh, I mean, we like hockey. And wrestling. And we like football. And wrestling. And we also like to drink beer. While wrestling. Well, not while wrestling, but while watching wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you want to get into a conversation with Maniac and Chris Parrish, then you need to tune into The Sounds of Struggle live on Backbreaker Media. Every Thursday. It's when we hope to draw, but sometimes Mal Ma- Mike Malawaney doesn't do his job right. Or we're too drunk to forget. Yeah, that shit happens too. Yeah. Uh, he can believe out the swear word. We weren't supposed to do that. Oh, but, I'll try not to swear. Ah, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. Um, let's face it. The two of us, we're real. And spectacular. And we're a little bit of all right. Yeah. We're also struggleicious. That we are. That was kind of the key. It's supposed to be a struggleicious. Oh, sorry, I'm trying. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you don't want to listen to us, then no. 
stupid because we're entertaining. And uh, if you want to do listen to us, then uh, yeah, come listen to us on Backbreaker Media. Yeah. Later, he said. Bi- later, bitches. Welcome back to this week's edition of Conversations with Love. I am joined by PWA Commissioner Thaddeus Archer the Third. Man, that still feels a little bit awkward to say after such a long run as the RCW General Manager. And I want to take a look back at your time as the RCW GM because, man, like, you talk about the need for a change and all of that earlier in the episode, but you did an absolutely phenomenal job as the RCW GM. Oh, Just a lot of different letters to put into a sentence. Yeah. But, um, I just want to get your thoughts back on your time as the RCW G, uh, RCW GM. <laughs> General manager. <laughs> oh, it's tough. Um, yeah. And just, what was the experience like for you? I was good. It was kind of abrupt. I mean, at that point in time, I had been done managing and, uh, and just doing nurture work for like six months or more. And it was brought to my attention that, would you like to be manager and I thought yeah, okay well what are the circumstances and we worked it out and I, I enjoyed it uh, in a lot of ways I enjoyed it I wish I could have done more um, as typical with RCW sometimes things get changed midstream or things get dropped or you know things happen with people that's in any wrestling organization yep. they take time away or this, this and that they get injured so I just I never felt like I had one complete uh, storyline or anything to happen with, with Stephen. Obviously, I had something going, but it really kind of ran the gamut of this thing to another thing. And I wish I just had more time to work with more of the guys in the ring as a GM. I think the funnest part of being GM was being GM with Archer. Yeah, <laughs> like that's because I had the control where I wanted to go with things, or not just the control myself, but we were able to bounce off, you know, being the boss and how to deal with certain individuals and personalities, which I don't think we did well in the ring. Okay. So, what would you have done differently? Oh. <laughs> I, I really, How long have we got? Hey? Yeah, exactly. No, I. The one thing really is I, you know, I kind of had something going with Eddie Rude. I really wanted to do that, you know, horrible boss beating you down to the point that you just lose it and you retaliate or, you know, not quit. You hopefully retaliate. And I really wanted to do that more with Eddie Rude. We kind of had something building there, and then it just didn't work out. And I. I I just thought that would be neat because everybody hated me. Yeah. Everybody. You were very easy to hate, and I mean that in Absol- the best way possible. Absolutely, and I love it. Uh, it's very hard being the nice commissioner right now. But uh, being the evil GM, it's like I just wanted to, to impart that upon someone else that, you know, could use that heat. <laughs> yeah. That could use that, uh, you know, like if they're, face- if they're trying to deal with my stuff, it's like you want to cheer them more. Yeah. Right. And so I, I just wish, yeah, in general, there was Eddie, there was a couple other ideas for people too. Um, but yeah, it just didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So then what's going to be the difference? I mean, GM, commissioner, you can pick apart the nuances all you want, but they're pretty well the same role. Yeah. What do you think is going to allow you to do that role differently in the PWA? Well, I've kind of done it about face. Yeah. Uh, excuse the pun on the last word there. Um, I was really, it's, it's taken a lot to hold in my <laughs> voluminous laughter here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I kind of did it about face. So I'm, at, I'm. At, it's the first for me. Yeah. Uh, save back prior to being Thaddeus and being a ring announcer, but it's the first for me. You know, with this this kind of position and this kind of facet. So I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be great. I really love interacting with the fans. So it'll give me much more reason to interact with the fans, and not in the way that when I tell them where to go and how to get there, or yeah. make fun of their mother or the way they dress. So. Yeah, I, I think it'll be different in that fashion, and it's a different environment. Yeah. And I, I think there's a lot to be done. The, the talent was great in RCW. Uh, I think the talent's really refined in PWA. And either, some people may not like that it's a lot of talent. They like a lot of talent in and out of the door. They can see more and more different wrestlers. I yeah. like the fact that PWA kind of sticks to their roster and works. Okay. So it'll give me a chance to stick to who's on the roster and work with them as opposed to you never know who's going to show up. I see benefits in both. Yeah. But for me personally, I think it's going to be exciting to have that. Well, you, you talk about the Archer Report as well. What do you think that'll add to that? Uh, I just having, some, I guess, having, I guess, a consistent cast is going to be huge for you. Yeah. Quote unquote. And, 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 and in a lot of ways, what I wanted with the Archer Report is it to marry its narrative, at least some form of its narrative, to the story. 
Yeah. And it was very hard because the story was chaotic and disjointed. In yeah. CW. Now the story seems to be very linear and uh, like things do change, but it seems very linear and planned, I guess is the best way to yeah, say it. Yeah, it, it almost seems like, not to put anybody under, the PWA and, and they do take the approach of it is one show. You've got a consistent storyline throughout pretty well every match. I mean, on every show, you're going to have your sort of random match. Mm -hmm. Again, for lack of a better way to put it, but they do always have like a consistent storyline, or they do almost try and uh, phase it like a TV show. Yeah, well, you're just building towards something. Really, that is wrestling when you want to go back to the territory days, TV or no TV. You want to build towards something, keep people invested. They have surprises in PWA. I mean, as anyone who came to the show could see, there was a few surprises. I'm going to knock you for that again. Um, but, Back uh, off, man. <laughs> but a no, few surprises, it's, like, with you sitting across from me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's just, you you know that anything could happen, and at the same time, you know that it's building towards something that's a payoff. Yeah. Uh, I've been a part of so many things on the other side of the fence where the payoff was ruined. Uh, my biggest one, it still annoys me to this day, and heard Slammer talk about it recently, was the, was the Slammer against Steven Stiles, the Slammer Collective, when Slammer went from being this nice guy to this almost kind of like weird cultist dictator, and people were screaming, hell, Slammer, and you didn't know whether he wanted to like him or hate him, and he was saying some very personal things that were true, and it was very, it had like his promos reached the next level, there was this emotion, and it had people in... Across Canada, different promoters and different wrestlers asking me, like, is this real? And yeah. What's happening? It really blurred that line. And that whole thing was kind of squashed. And that yeah. was the reason the PW, or sorry, RCW lost Slammer to PWA. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just too much of that. I, I, with PWA, it's like we can have a plan. I can marry the Archer Report to that because there is some wackiness and some strange things in the Archer Report. You don't you say. Can, once in a while. But, uh, <laughs> But at the same time, I want to I want to compliment the product. Hundred percent. And I man. couldn't feel I was complimenting the product. In a lot of ways, we probably did some things that didn't compliment the product, and there were some snide things said and done, and it was it was just a, a, a sign of the times and what was happening, and not having if I was frustration, not having anywhere to go. Right? Yeah. So, so no, I think it'll be a lot different with PWA. I think, uh, yeah, I just to yeah, end it off there. I think PWA would be much. Much more beneficial experience to me personally. Well, and you've brought up the Slammer a couple times. Obviously, I've I've only met the guy briefly. He's a personal favorite as far as wrestlers go for me, but he's someone you've got a relationship with. So, I guess two parts here. Number one, tell me about your relationship with the Slammer. Um, number two, you know, you talk to wrestlers a ton about relationships with other wrestlers and what that sort of impact you can have on whether it's a match or or any interactions they have. As a guy who's more of a personality, whether it be a ring announcer or a commissioner or whatever it may be, what do you think that adds to that relationship? Uh, adds to working with him? Yeah. Yeah. I, you can ask Slammer um, when his time working with me because we had never worked together. Yeah. And then I became the manager for the Slammer Collective or the Collective as we called ourselves. And we've been building and talking about this forever, but I I was the hype man for him. Yeah. To, to, for people to understand that change. Uh, I made the first Hail Slammer meme. Very cool. And I, I'm sure anyone listening to this that knows saw or did themselves make Hail Slammer memes. It just took off. For, As you should. You should just hail the Slammer. Yeah, you should hail the Sovereign Supreme, yes. <laughs> 231 pounds of nuclear, nuclear bicep. bicep. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, Hailing like, from the Slammiverse. Yeah. Your friend and mine. Everyone's friend. Yes. Man, what a great guy. That guy, like, he used the phrase legend so very sparingly just to give it the impact it deserves. No, Fully deserves the no, title of an, not even an Edmonton, an independent wrestling oh, legend. Yeah. I mean, he's known, like, uh, he's known for stuff out in Vancouver. He's known for the Northern Death Tour. He's well known. He's doing that again with... Probably as yep. we speak right now. Well, as we um, heard on the excellent edition of the Two Bay Cams podcast, thoroughly enjoyed that one, man. Yes. They're yes. almost as good as I am. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Almost. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, it's like, and we're just, really, we've become good friends. Uh, we kind of see things in the same light, bounce things off each other. Doesn't mean I'm going to be preferential to him in PWA, but I just enjoy working with him. Like, there was, there's no work 
in working with the slammer. I, I really, I'm just trying, being from the school of management, you're trying to basically not take away from what's happening with your client. You're just trying to add nuances to make it even better. And that's what I did with them. That's probably one of the times I felt more comfortable as an overall manager. Like I really understood is when I was at it for the slammer. So. And is that just because, like, again, you've got the personal relationship with them? Like, how much discussion goes into that sort of stuff with... Oh, yeah, tons of discussion. You talk, I mean, if you're in the car or you're just anywhere after the show, during the show, you always talk. So yeah. there's, there's a lot of talk to it. And that speaks back to what I mentioned before where I, I really wanted to work with a person. Yeah. I wanted to work with a person and not just manage A, B, C, and D or have a stable, but have this relationship. Yeah. Like you, you when they think of the Nature Boy or the Four Horsemen, they think of J J J Dill. Hundred you know, percent. Or you know, when you think of Andre, you think of Bobby. Yeah. Heenan sort of thing. So I, I just wanted to be that complimentary character, and I had that with Slam. That's that's what the real difference is: is when you both click and you understand. I understand how he works, and he understands how I works, and now we can both make our strengths look better and our weaknesses get. Absolutely, man. Are those sort of, you bring up J.J. Uh, Dillon and Bobby Heenan, are those sort of the guys you looked up to? or uh, GJ, What got you into managing? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, number one, Bobby the Brain. Oh uh, number God. two, probably Polly Dangerously. Okay. Uh, J, J.J.'s probably in the top five. Jim Cornette's thrown in there. Um, yep. And Cornette, then, I just, I start liking more and more because... There's something, like, when I first started following wrestling in that, I hated Cornette because he was such a grumpy old man. Yep. And now I absolutely love Jim Cornette because he's a grumpy old man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, Jimmy Hart, pre-WWE, Memphis Dance. Love why, Jimmy Hart. Why the, why the cutoff? Was, I, Just on another less, level prior, less, or did he okay. change in WWE? And uh, so like WWE it? was kind of one note. Okay. Was, uh, maybe two. He notes. was a guy with a megaphone. Yeah, megaphone yelling at ringside, and he did great promos. Mm-hmm. I'll never knock that. He always did. But you saw an evil side of him in the Memphis days. Uh, yeah, you really got to see a little more of like a devious nature, and he, you know, he was he had the voice. He still talked like that, but I, I kind of I really like my evil managers more. And he was never one that you hated. And I mean, not Heart Foundation in the beginning, maybe to some degree, but. It was. I it just, was hard to hate the Hart Foundation yeah, overall. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's why I. Say I mean, that. you say that as Canadians. Yeah, <laughs> and, there, and there's more. I mean, uh, the Gary Hart's and uh, I mean, Mr. Fuji has has his things that I really enjoyed about him. Like with Gene, his stuff I like is the ribs he pulled with most of the guys, like pinching me Gene's ass during an interview, and yeah, stuff like that. But I uh, mainly Bob the Brain Heenan. What got me into managing, or what got me gave me my love for managing, I guess better said, is. When I was younger, you know, watching the WWE, at a certain point I realized that I found the bad guys a little more interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jake the Snake, like, it just, he was far more interesting than others. You know, Macho Man during his, his heel phase, I, I, I was really drawn to. And and Bobby was just so entertaining. Even he was, when he was deliciously doing, evil. Yeah, even when he was doing his color commentary, like his words, wordsmanship, and just, it, it, I just I had to respect that. And I yeah. knew I was always a small kid. I knew I was never going to, I never had any hope to be a big guy. I mean, I guess I should have dreamed bigger and I could have been bigger, but ha, I, I just, I, like that. Yeah, I just, I was like, <laughs> if I could see myself doing anything in wrestling, yeah. Be yeah, because I loved them. Like each one, even Harvey Whippleman and each one had their nuances. I just loved it. So, so yeah, it was because of Bobby. That was the reason why I was okay. No, that I really would like to be a manager. And then eventually the chance came, you know, I started off as a ring announcer and as I did it more and more, I realized I wanted to be more of a character, and I'm very by the book. I think a ring announcer, no offense to Ivan, shouldn't have much of a character, should be very stodic. But at least that's what I thought at the time being new to the business. Uh, Ivan's an amazing MC. He's not just an announcer. He's like an MC, but... He's a host. He's a host. Yeah, absolutely. So I just, I I wanted to be something more. I, yeah. You know, and I, I've done some training, and so like I been trained to a degree, and I, I didn't want to necessarily be a wrestler. Uh, I'd broken my back years prior, so I knew that was just another reason why I shouldn't be taking too many bumps, but I still like bumping. Yeah. Uh, nobody likes bumping, but I still like 
I like selling is probably the better way to say okay. it. Um, and going back to Bobby, his selling was just some of the best, right? So, yeah, I, uh, I gave it a shot and became a manager, and I never looked back since. Who'd you manage first? My first was uh, Big Jess Young. Excellent Full choice, circle. man. I was going <laughs> to say. Wasn't, that wasn't a choice. On, I, I will be honest. That was a choice of the promoter. I was a brand new manager. Okay. And the promoter said, I'm going to put you with someone who can teach you stuff. And uh, being intimidated and knowing Jess, I was afraid pardon me, he wasn't going to like the situation. And he wasn't going to teach me anything and probably try to push me out because it was being forced on, on by yep. the promoter. He was amazing. Taught me tons of, tons of stuff. Uh, always gave me good feedback. Always gave me good cues out in the ring. Uh, so once things got comfortable with him, uh, Evan Adams was another one okay. I worked with uh, primarily. And then Dick Richards were sort of the three first starter ones for me. Yeah. And then from there, there's been many. <laughs> I was going to say, it's very, very cool, man. You bring up Jess Youngblood. He's another guy who plays his role so well. I was shocked at how nice he was when I met him. I'm really sorry if that's like a blasphemous thing to say on a podcast i hope i'm not like killing kayfabe as we talk but what a guy i, I had a fan message me uh about a month ago and said i met big jess uh while doing some delivery uh, yeah at a job and it was it was his job so i, I met big jess and we had a talk and he's just the nicest guy in the world that goes I guess kayfabe's dead yeah, <laughs> i can't hate him anymore yeah exactly. it's still real to me yeah damn it. yeah so, no, both him and Metal, and you talk, it's very cool for those who are listening and didn't know, which you should, damn it. Uh, Thaddeus recently finished off his tenure in RCW as manager for top talent. It was your last month, so you obviously didn't get much of a run, but like, did you get a satisfaction out of it sort of coming full circle with Jess, or I guess not knowing much about your first run with him, what did you see in the differences not only in him as a wrestler, but yourself as a manager, when you literally get a perfect parallel to sort of end it off. Yeah, it was huge differences in myself. Yeah. Jess really uh, found Jess was like a little less angry and a little more statesman. Like Jess has gotten comfortable uh, with everything and who he is. I just Jess is a to me is a veteran. Yeah, uh, metal too. Uh, they're, they're veterans. They know what they're doing. They know what they're saying. They're top I, talent. Yeah, they're like top in, talent. in more than name. And not that I didn't see that with Jess. I think he had lots of talent there, but I didn't know enough to look into much more nuances than I do now. Um, okay. And But there was a huge difference in who I was then and who I was with them. Mm-hmm. And I, I loved it. I wish I had more time with them with just the way everything worked out because uh, we could have had a lot of fun. Um, even just the book of psychology. Oh, I love yeah, it. Yeah, so. I brought that book. To metal. It really? wasn't my idea for the book of psychology, but... You brought they, the physical book? What I love about those guys is that, and what I love about the Archer Report, is that you can take anything, turn shit into shino, anything into gold. Yeah. And they, like that's what, that's what it was. I could literally bring this big, thick book to metal, and he goes, oh, we got the book of psychology. And it was a Canadian encyclopedia. Now it's a Canadian it's a book of, of psychology. Yeah. And, they, you know, it's, it's just anything. Like, we could take the weirdest props on the Archer Report or the Top Talent Rider and just sell anything to make a laugh or just get enjoyment out of it, right? 100%, man. I think that that's something, and it's nice you bring it up because I was going to bring it up later anyways, but that's something I appreciate so much about not only Thaddeus Archer the third, but the way you think wrestling is like, man, if you buy in to this wonderful world of sports entertainment, like, Anything can be great. Like, that's like sitting and saying, I could sit there and say, well, The Undertaker's not dead. Right? But if you buy in, like, and and looking at it on the talent side of things, if you're going to buy into something like the book of psychology, like, I thoroughly enjoy it. You know? You look at that, like, something is as... Silly's not the word, you know? I don't mean to say it's silly, but something like that, or something like you look on a WWE level... With Rusev creating his own holiday and getting it to be the most over thing in the world exactly. for a period I mean, of a year. Even like Stone Cold 316 says, I just whipped your ass. It's one of the, big, if not the biggest thing. And it's just an off the cuff comment that yeah. just, you have to keep trying and experimenting and improving and doing new things in wrestling to see what sticks and what doesn't. And caring. I think care to it is the yes. biggest thing. And you know, before we take a quick break here, I just wanted to sort of put you over with that as like you were one of the most caring guys isn't the way I want to put it, but you care about the product you put out, you know, whatever you're doing, whether it be 
the Archer Report or whether it be your role as a GM or a commissioner or a ring announcer, you are there to get everyone else over, make it a better product. And for that, we appreciate you, Thaddeus Archer the Third. When we come back on Conversations with the Love, we've only got a couple more questions. We've only got a couple more minutes. But I'm going to get Thad's thought on one big question that I have had. That is why you think that WWE is sort of reverting away from the manager. I've saved it for last because I think it's going to be something we'll talk about for a bit when we come back on this week's edition of Conversations with Love. Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. Welcome back to Conversations with Love on Backbreaker Media, a proud member of the Wind Column Sports Network and officially, as of last week, proudly sponsored by Beercade YEG. So head to 106th Street and White Avenue for all your WWE pay-per-views. We're there hosting Over the Top Rope live with the Brothers of Discussion. Each and every pay-per-view, you guys want to be there. And how there's $4 beers, so even if you don't like us, everybody likes a $4 beer. We're joined by Thaddeus Archer III, and in our final segment, our One Big Thought segment of the show, Thad, you are an outstanding manager, you're an outstanding commissioner, you're an outstanding GM. We've talked about that previously, but one question I wanted to ask you as the first sort of personality or manager that we've had on the show WWE and wrestling as a whole has seemed to move away from the role of the manager whether that's just Vince being Vince whatever it may be why do you think the role of the manager is sort of dissipated and what are your thoughts on it overall I can't say why it's really dissipated I think maybe there was too much it was a saturation point at some point along the way um from what I've read or heard, the Vince McMahon was never a huge fan of the manager. It was more of a Vince McMahon senior sort of thing. And it just carried on over and from one generation to the next. So then you saw over time a lot of managers fall by the wayside. Um, and I think in a lot of ways it's, it, does, it isn't always needed. And when you have too many, I think it's, it, it kind of messes things up. You, even in an independent wrestling organization, you shouldn't have too many managers because really it's... You, you, the, you it's take, counterproductive at that. It's point. counterproductive. You take away the specialness of actually what a manager does and what's happening, right? So, um, well, on that, then, what does a good manager or a great manager, I guess, add to a wrestler? I, you know, or or whatever they happen to be managing. <laughs> a good manager adds, depending on who they are, they can help speak for them. Yeah, they can help be the voice. Uh, a good manager adds heat. You know, if everybody hates Thaddeus Archer III, and you go to Thaddeus Archer III, they're going to hate you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then at ringside, it's a, a manager is like a catalyst for things to happen. So you can help your opponent cheat to win, and then his opponent doesn't look weak because you help him cheat. Mm-hmm. So you, you're walking away with no one really looking all that bad. At the same time, I can do something stupid. And now something will happen to my client and he'll lose. Well, it's not his fault that he lost. It doesn't make him look weak. It's that manager. So I'm the mm-hmm. catalyst to be able to tell the story a different way and continue the storyline down the road without just immediately squashing someone with a straight out loss here or a straight out loss there. It, it adds something more to it. Right? Okay. So what do you think Thaddeus Archer the Third brings differently to the game than any other manager out there? Impeccable style. <laughs> no, impeccable style, uh, and it just it depends on how you look at it. I, I can make a crowd love or hate. Uh, it doesn't matter who I'm with. I can be by myself. It doesn't take me much, but I can make a crowd either eat out of my hand or want to stab me in the back. So I think that's always been my strong suit. I can connect with that crowd one mm-hmm. way or another, and... A lot of independent managers might not necessarily be able to do that. I feel I can do that. I can do that on my own away from my clients. And that's not talking anything less about the people I work with, but it just it's good to know that you can throw me out with anyone and I can help get people to love or hate you. Fair enough. I guess, obviously, as the commissioner, you may not be back in a management anytime soon, but do you see Thaddeus Archer III taking on any new clients in the near future? 
Well, that's not in the contract right now. <laughs> uh, down the road, I, uh, I'm always going you got to pay them extra for that. Yes. yes. <laughs> now, down the road, I, I hope to be a manager yeah, again in some fashion or form. Um, but as it is now, I'm happy uh, with a new challenge. So I'm happy to be commissioner of what I'm doing now. Fair enough, man. Well, on this week's edition of Conversations wow, with really? Love, man, thank you very much for joining us. We thoroughly appreciate it. Don't forget to tune into wincolumnsports.ca for all your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of wrestling, which you can find on Backbreaker Media, proudly sponsored by Beercade Y-E-G. This has been Conversations with Love on Backbreaker Media. Thank you for joining us.